Hello friends, today I'd like to talk to you about wildflower photography, close-ups in nature. Today we're going to talk about some issues involving close-up photography in nature and some techniques to help you improve your own wildflower pictures. First though, a word about equipment. I'm often asked, what is the best camera for wildflower photography? The answer is, the camera that surrounds the best lenses you can afford. The quality of your pictures has more to do with the quality of your lenses than any other factor except your skill as a photographer. Happily, nearly all of today's cameras, including point and shoot cameras like this one, and even some cell phone cameras are all capable of producing excellent, if not pro quality images. Someone once told me, you can take a close up photo without a tripod, but you shouldn't. In a pinch, I've even pulled my boot off and used it to prop up my camera when my tripod wasn't available. Personal safety and comfort are just as important, more important really, than photo techniques. Bug spray, drinking water are essential if you're going to be working in the field and a kneeling pad sure helps old knees like mine. Here in Texas and in many other parts of the country, fire ants are a very real threat to the nature of photographers' health and well-being. Always be aware of what's around you when you stop to take photographs. One of the greatest challenges for the close-up wildflower photographer is wind. Late afternoons, and especially early mornings, are always less windy than midday hours. If you must shoot in the wind, faster shutter speeds and various types of plant clamps may be used to freeze that action. It's very convenient when the wildflower you wish to photograph is at eye level. But unless you're a quail, that doesn't happen very often. Most wildflowers will be found at knee level or below, sometimes well below. Bending over and shooting down at a wildflower can sometimes yield good results, but subjects photographed from above are often lost in the busy background of vegetation, rock, soil, and other objects beneath them. Most of the time, it's best to get your camera down to the level of the flower you're photographing, or even below it. Look at your subject with a critical eye. Think about the shot that you want. Consider the image foreground and background and what is in it. How do you want them to appear in your image? Do some gardening if necessary and remove plant debris and other objects that might be a problem. Shooting pictures using your camera's auto setting is fine and is often a good place to start. But if your camera has the capability to manually adjust shutter speed and aperture settings, then it's a great idea to explore the creative results that those functions make possible. Slowing your camera's shutter speed and decreasing its aperture setting will increase the image's depth of field. Increasing shutter speed and increasing aperture will decrease depth of field. You may find that the combination of settings that result in the best image will be found only through trial and error. The more things you try and the more errors you make, the more great shots you'll also make. So put on your bug spray, take plenty of water, and go out and photograph some wildflowers in nature, close up. I think you'll enjoy the experience.